No, you guys, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here at the Foresight booth. Um, I have a, been using Foresight for a while now, and I've got to be honest with you, I'm really enjoying the technology. I've got a uh, young man here, JP from Columbia, right? JP, yeah. JP welcome, buddy. Thank so you, you play some college golf down in Miami? Yeah, college golf, senior year. Senior year, yeah. fantastic. So we're going to watch you hit a couple shots. Naturally, you got a lot of club head speed for a 7-iron. That's, that's ridiculous. Anyway, hit another shot for me, pal. Let's see what we see. So, you know, coaching, Co JP's a good player. And watching a few elements, I'll show you what I'm looking at. Lovely grip, you know, an obnoxious amount of speed. And he striped a shot. 290, so you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna go to the bar. This is over. <laughs> no. Let's go face on here. Let's have a look and see what we can, what can we glean? Now I can tell you, as he warmed up, I noticed a couple interesting things. The react, the, his engagement club to ground was a little on the chunky side a couple of times. So he kind of caught a bit of the mat before the ball. And now when you guys coach predominantly on a mat, you'll want to pay attention to how the club engages with the mat and the ball naturally. Because some people can feel like a hero on mats, and then when they go to turf, guess what happens? It's not so friendly, is it, right? So as a coach, if you're in domes and you're coaching indoors, and I predominantly use mine inside at my studio in Phoenix, right? I'm very mindful of the contact. Now that last one by just representative of a carry 206, right? And so we look at this and we go, path is slightly out, out to in. Now, JP, do you prefer to hit a fade? Is that what you're trying to hit? Yeah, my swing, I hit is a fade. So that's, what you, that's your go-to shot? I try to go straight, but yeah, it's easier for me to hit a cut. Okay, it's easier to, for you to hit a cut. Yeah. Now, I would completely concur in your setup bias. When you set up to a golf ball, my friend, one of the things that just simply make, makes the path fractionally biased toward going a little out to in, which is lovely at your speed. You know, when you get my age, okay, you would be my son. When you get my age, you know, we like usually to turn the ball over and hit a draw. Yeah. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and set up to this one. Let's see how you make the numbers change. We'll come back to this screen in a second. So we just absolutely smashed one. Now, do me a favor, leave that golf ball there. Shuffle both of your feet, JP, three inches that way. So we're gonna move the golf ball a little bit more in the middle of your stance, okay? Just go ahead, even a couple more inches. I know you're fighting me, you're fighting me. Keep going, keep going, keep going. In fact, let me get this, get this cord out of the way so you don't feel like you're standing on it. So feel like the golf ball is a bit more centered in your stance. And just entertain that for me and hit one. Okay, so JP, you made me look like a hero. Okay, way to go, brother. Thanks for me. So let's watch what the numbers do now, just by, like that's crazy. 243 of the, like, come on, right? It's crazy. So let, we'll go to the, the screen I love to coach from. My boy Ryan Wasser on there. When you want to buy one of these, this is the man you're gonna see right here, because you hounded me for a long time, and I love it, now that I own one, I'm thrilled about it. Okay, so let's, so the path now went into out. Did you try to swing into out? No. Right? You didn't try to swing into out. So what was the only thing we changed, pal? Ball position. Ball position. Why did ball position change things dramatically? Two degrees for you and how you presented the club to the ball. Do you know, JP? If you don't know, that's good. You know what? A key to being a wise man is knowing what you don't know. So let me show you. Come on over here for a sec, okay? Now, the mistake I would make is if I hit one now after he hit. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just teasing. So think about this, my friend. So you had a bias, you know, lovely grip, strong guy, okay? Clear, clearly spent a lot of time in the gym. But you had a ball location for this 5-iron. I think it's a 5-iron, 6-iron. I, I hate you more now, okay? You had this ball location way forward in your stance, which is fine, right? But think about if I stood here... And I'm gonna exaggerate this. If I have the ball way, way, way more forward in my stance, can I get to this ball with an inside out delivery, JP? I can't, can I? The only way I could get to this ball, right, is with an, ex that's more like a how I hit it. With an extreme over the top behavior, yeah, and the only, thing, the only way I can get to it is to produce that kind of a shot, right? So a guy like you, sometimes when you get a really good player in front of, you know, the, the better the player, the more I sit back and just watch for a little bit before I even make a comment. You know, and in this environment, right, we're limited on time, I'm gonna watch you hit a couple. Right away I'm like, ooh, this guy's fast, I like speed. And then I noticed the bias of a fade, and I said, do you play a fade? Of course you play a fade. And you kind of said, okay, well, I wouldn't mind understanding a bit of different ball flight, right? So now if I said the difference, say I said something completely different, say I stood over here and I hit one, okay? 
Now, does this necessarily mean I'm going to hit it low with the ball back in my stance? Some people would think so. I would only hit it low with the ball back in my stance if I'm indeed trying to hit it down my target line. But if I let the golf ball go to the right, okay, I can start it way to the right, can I? Now, I mishit that and the ball went squirrely, but my point is I didn't hit it low with the ball back in my stance. I just had an excessive amount of rightward path. So when the ball's forward, where's my path delivery going to be? When the ball's back, my path is probably going to be more inside out, isn't it? Right? So for a really good player like you, all we really did was m just manage ball location a little without messing with your awesome golf swing. Okay? So a lot of the times for you, it would just be, you know, in a couple of swings, I think if all we did was just move the ball back a sliver for you, and it felt like you fought me a little bit, didn't you? You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, but you did, you hit a nice shot. So, and oftentimes the better the player, the smaller the adjustment, right? Really good players, we're not, we're not building a new golf swing. All we're doing is looking, okay, where did that really good player get out of balance? Was it a posture thing? Was it a ball location thing? Okay, and, and, and that's how we'd manage a guy like you. Any, come on over here so I can kind of hear you a little bit better. What, quest, what, what issues do you have on the golf course? Is it going into your senior year of college that you might want to refine? Other than maybe understanding start lines a bit more, it's, wedge play, anything it's like that. Consistency. Okay. Like I'm a good ball striker. But yeah. I sometimes I don't know. We have that big right miss. Okay. That is, I think it's because it's coming over the top and cutting. Cut okay. So it. when you have the right, so he says he's a good ball striker. Generally, he has the big right miss. Is it a ball that spins and, and kind of slices that goes to the right? Yeah, it just right spinning. Okay. So it's and and. and do you know if it's, do you feel when you hit it on the face, my friend, is it, does it feel like it's a heel bias or fairly solid? Fairly solid. Fairly solid. Open face and cut across it. Okay. Yeah. So, so when a ball misses to the right, the face doesn't have to be open. The face could be pretty square, yeah. right? So you play a little soccer, I'm guessing, back yeah. in your day, right? Yeah. So think about when, when a soccer ball is here and I'm going to move my foot into it to spin it, right? You've got a difference between face and path and your forward ball location, it wouldn't take too much if the ball got too forward for you to have too much leftward path and friction the ball into a fade. Yeah. So again, as a coach watching a really good player, all I'm gonna do with you is make sure that we keep you in sort of a few little defined positions. And a guy that's trying to play consistent golf, I don't even like the word consistent, I just want you to be reliable. For you, it would be more the walk-in routine. Can you have like a, a great walk-in routine so come on over here for a sec, JP. So we can't do this, but normally a swing would start from back here with some kind of a priming event. Now when you're you know, taking your final you know, dedicated move to walk into this, you'd walk in and fixing a guy like you is not really fixing, but say I stepped into the golf ball with my trail foot on the ball line, okay? And then I organize my club face and hands. And then I set my left foot and drop my right foot back. Now for you walking in, you know, right foot on the ball line, okay? Now you're gonna take your left foot, and notice how I'm not taking my left foot and putting it beside my right foot. I'm taking my left foot, I'm stepping it a little bit to the left of my golf ball so the golf ball can be a little bit more centered in my stance. I like it left centered, okay? So my typical delivery is gonna be one that's mildly inside out if I hit a shot for you. I hit it about 50 yards shorter than you, you young punk, I hate you. Okay? So there's a reasonable strike. And so you hit it, that was good for me. You got me all nervous and I had to hit a little bit harder, right? And so when we go to the data, the club face data on this, yeah. And so what's really cool about this to you, you guys is like outside hitting wedges, it's awesome. Spin numbers, boom, 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 every time. Launch angle, every time, okay? And, and the other company, I like the other company too, don't get me wrong, because I have the other company's product too. But, there's some really cool benefits to this stuff right here. Now we look at that, so look at that path inside out. Too much, man. Okay, that's too much, right? So I look at that and I go, how can I manage that? Now from what you've learned, how can I manage my path without making a big swing change, JP? Hey, you're getting to be a good teacher, JP. I can move the golf ball a little bit more forward in my stance and take some of that inside out path away, take away some of that curve, right? But for you as a, as a good player, and as a coach trying to be conscious of you playing your golf and me not stuffing my ideas into your head, right? All I would have you do is learn how to have a walk-in routine that's maybe a little bit different where your right foot goes on the ball line, you organize your club face and hands, right? 
and your left foot maybe steps a hair more left before you settle in for your stance. So what you did really nicely was your waggle was great, everything was awesome, but the ball was just a fraction more forward. Okay, but that was really good. Now you guys, how about putting your hands together real quick for JP? Way to go, brother. Any more questions? Thanks for everything. You feel oh, good? That was good. Cool. All right, JP, come on up. I'm going to share some stuff about, about the quad and the unit I love right here. Now, would you go back to that face, that impact for a second? Anyone, anyone will do. Just talk about it. Yeah, for sure. So, J I got a little lesson from JP now. I'm not going to put the golf ball so far back in my stance. I'm going to soften that path just a sliver with a little bit of golf ball location change. Okay. We got a wee bit of a fade right there. Okay. And we'll take a look at the club face path info here. And, and one of the things that is immediate when you teach somebody, my business is primarily a golf school. A lot of golf school vacationers come see me in, in Phoenix, Arizona. We run a three-day golf camp. And this is the critical thing on the bottom right of the screen right there, impact location, right? When you show them that visual, and you see that my toe is presented fractionally up. The toe's up, the heel's down, okay? That's not what I see at the golf school. You know what I see at the golf school? The handle up and the toe down. So when you take loft, you guys, so there's loft, and then I move this this way, which way is that loft pointing? For the right-handed golfer, it's pointing to the right. Now, it doesn't take too long for that golfer to do what? Do some self-organized fix of doing a, some sort of corrective rolly move, right? Now, if you get a golfer in here that has a very high handle delivery and the toes way down, some fitter, okay, some club fitter out there, God bless them, right, might try to put that student into something that's way, way upright. I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe in talking to the student and saying, hey, listen, You've got a delivery where the club's steep, and then to fix it, you kind of raise the handle and fit the toe down handle up, right? And in that, it's going to be unreliable, and you're going to have some unreliable face delivery, and that's why most of your shots are very random, okay? So as a teaching weapon, which is what this is, so this club is a little bit too upright for me, just a little bit. I'm not the tallest guy. When I deliver it, the handle's fairly low, so my club is naturally a little bit flatter. But when you have to fit somebody outside of, say, two or three degrees, I won't, typically won't fit anybody into, that's even 6'6 six, six, into something that's maybe more than one, more, one or two upright max, and then flat maybe one or two down. But very rarely am I putting somebody up way, way up because I don't want to, I don't want to reward that behavior. Okay? I want to teach somebody about how do they get the grooves to travel parallel to the ground when they hit it, and they can't do it when they get steep and over here. So, the quad, you know, this is really fun. I take it home. I, I have a, a garage hitting area too. So my son loves it. He walks out and hits golf balls. And he's, he's 62 pounds, and his goal is to swing at 70 miles an hour. So he swings about 68 miles an hour. So I say, son, he's a little guy. I say, as long as you can swing at your weight, you're doing good, right? If you can swing at your weight, you're doing So it's a fun thing. And he puts it on. He plays a couple of holes, right? And he smashes it around the range. So indoors, he goes and whacks at it. I use it professionally when I go to work, and it just plops down on the range, and it's, it's a fantastic training aid because as soon as you see something like this, and it, you give this student this vivid picture of impact, right? And it's really easy to pop the fiducials on there to have this relationship of where the ball is making contact with the face, and then how they're delivering that face. Because there's a place where you've got to fix it as a coach. Right? You gotta get this thing where these crews are kind of parallel to the horizon. That's your job as a coach. And then how your message is and how you, how you figure out how to get that guy to fix that, everybody's gonna do that a little bit differently, right? But when you're powered with this, it's fantastic. And this is kind of the screen I live on. Launch angle, attack angle, bottom left right there, naturally impact location, and then face the path, all those, all those elements that are that are really, really helpful. So you guys, I'm not gonna stay on here too much longer, but I really thank you for watching this little bit of teaching demo with my friend JP. From where again, buddy? Colombia. Colombia, thank you much. I drink all that Colombian coffee, man. Yeah. So thanks so much, and I wanna thank Sport, uh, Foresight for having me out. 
and it's a great product. If you have any questions, I'll be right here. So thanks, you guys. Have a great day.